In the WSUC, there are no easy victories. Night in and night out, teams in the best small college conference in America battle for a championship. Any team can go down on any occasion, and for the losers, there are no accolades. The champion of this conference must be talented. It must play together, and it must play to win. These ingredients describe the 91-92 UW Stevens Point men's basketball team, a team that built its confidence one game at a time and climbed the mountain to the WSUC championship. The Pointers won their first outright title since 1986 and their first District 14 title since 1985. Stevens Point also learned that illustrious trip to Kemper Arena in Kansas City at the NAIA National Tournament. These are goals that were dreamed of last October 15th. Those dreams have now become reality. This is the story of championship basketball. The Pointers realizing a dream. Quant Fieldhouse, Saturday, December 7th. After jumping to a 4-0 record, Stevens Point faced its first challenge of the year in Olivet Nazarene. The Pointers took no prisoners in going on a 25-5 run to open the second half en route to a 99-63 thrashing of the Tigers. The Pointers were now 5-0, heading into their first WSUC test at Division III National Champion Platteville. The Platteville game was an all-out WSUC war. Gabe Miller's layup put the Pointers up two with 534 left but Platteville rallied to regain the lead. Mike Harrison's three-point shot cut the lead to one, but the Pointers could only force overtime and ran out of gas. The Pioneers prevailed 87 to 80. After a win at Superior on December 14th, Point took two weeks off. Its next opponent would be arch rival Viterbo College. Quant Fieldhouse was filled to capacity on December 27th as Stevens Point rallied from a 10-point halftime deficit. Buck Games layup at the 150 mark would ice Stevens Point's 83 to 76 victory. The Pointers would then sweep three wins in the Bahamas and down Lacrosse and Oshkosh, setting up a January 17th meeting with arch rival Eau Claire at Quant Fieldhouse. Harrison and Miller would pace the Pointers in the first half with their outside bombs as Stevens Point led 27 to 20. Point would build its lead to as many as 14 midway through the second half, but the Blue Gold would rally. They cut the game to two on Mike Hatch's circus shot with five minutes left. But Andy Boreal would hit this tough shot in the lane and can five of six free throws down the stretch to ice the 52-43 win. After disposing of River Falls and Stout, Point set itself up for another showdown at Quant Fieldhouse, a January 25th meeting with talented Whitewater. On this night, the Pointers would ride the shoulders of its senior captains, John Julius and Mike Harrison. Julius's dunk off an alley-oop pass from Harrison put point ahead early. Later in the half, Harrison would bomb it at three, and Julius would come up with a steal and a fast break basket as point led by nine at the half. When Scott Fry got a dunk on the first possession of the second half, point was on its way to a 91-73 route of the Warhawks. Stevens Point had the success it did in 91-92 because of contributions from all 13 players on the roster but two very special individuals were the leaders, John Julius and Mike Harrison. They were in their fourth and final season as pointers, and they had come to Stevens Point in 1988 with dreams and goals. This season, those dreams and goals were met. The duo combined to rewrite the pointer record book. They are two young men who handle themselves with class and dignity. They will always be affectionately remembered as Juice and Boomer. But, uh, this year, uh, it's the icing on the cake. So far, we're 22 and one. Uh, we're on a good roll. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of hard work. Uh, coach Parker, uh, I don't think I've ever played for a, a coach that knows as much about basketball and knows the game like he does, uh, or is quite as competitive as he is. Uh, he really pushes his players. I have a lot of respect for him. I. I have no regrets whatsoever about coming to uh, Point. I think it was one of the better decisions ever made. I've, John and myself came here in 1988, and we came in with 10 freshmen, and that was actually really tough because we had a lot of all-state players, and we didn't know really what to expect. So we came in, and we, we, we kind of had an okay year. It was both up and down, but we got through it, and each year we improved a little bit. The next year, with Scott Anderson, we improved even more, and we, we came out like like uh, racehorses and started out 12 and all that season. And we really learned a lot of 
things from the seniors over here. We give a lot of credit to Mike Lehrman, who, as a freshman, myself looked up to very much because he taught us really the ropes on how to play in the WSC, the tricks, play out on the court, how to cope with things. And then after, when he graduated, the next year was Scott Anderson. And Scotty really taught me a lot because he played my position, so I learned a lot from Scott Anderson. One of the reasons that we won this year is just because of the tremendous character that John Julius and, and Mike Harrison displayed this year. They're great role models. They did a great job of leadership on our team. Uh, they're a little bit different in their styles. John Julius is more the type of player who leads by example. He's the first one on the floor. He's the last one to leave at practice. Uh, you know, he's really a, the type of player in the game that's a steadying influence. He's a very consistent player. Uh, on the other hand, Mike Harrison is more the verbal leader. If somebody needs a little kick in the seat of the pants, he's right there to give it. And yet, if somebody needs a pat on the back, he, he gives that. So he's the verbal leader, and John Julius is the leader by example. And uh, it makes for a great blend. So I'm really happy with, uh, with uh, not only the production they've had on the floor, but also their leadership qualities. On the stretch run at the WSUC title started on January 29th at Quant. A capacity crowd of better than 4,000 watched the Pointers totally frustrate Platteville 58 to 40. The Pointers held the top-rated Pioneers to 23% shooting. Point went on a 12 to nothing run late in the first half, and the crowd went crazy when Julius dunked the lob pass from Harrison, forcing Platteville to call timeout. The Pioneers would never get any closer than eight the rest of the way. The fever of pointer basketball was back as the fans sang goodbye to Platteville. Point received its first scare on the road on February 1st. Oshkosh played point to the wire, but Harrison shot Stevens point to the victory with a three-pointer from the corner to tie, and then this 10-foot jumper to seal the win. Oshkosh's Kurt Wolfer missed a Hail Mary three at the buzzer, and point escaped 87 to 84. Victories over Stout, Superior, and Michigan Tech gave the pointers 20 wins for the season and put them just four victories away from a WSUC title. Parker said at best after Stevens Point's 72-57 thrashing of Eau Claire on February 14th. To win the WSUC, you have to get by Zorn Arena. The WSUC, District 14, and Basketball Times NAIA Coach of the Year could not have said it any better. Point cruised, winning at Zorn for the first time since 1986. Stevens Point was on fire as Borio, Harrison, Julius, and Lothian all hit for double figures. It was the first point a regular season sweep of the Blue Golds since 1986. The next night in River Falls would be a war. Showing signs of fatigue from the night before, Point could not put the determined Falcons away. Borio's three-point bomb and layup gave Point a nine-point lead with 2.19 left. But Stevens Point had to scrap and dig to put this one away. Gabe Miller was fouled with 3.2 seconds left. The freshman from Plymouth then calmly plopped in the game-winning free throw. Brian Menzel's desperation three hit the rim at the buzzer, and Stevens Point slid by 76 to 75. The February 19th meeting with Lacrosse would not be a cakewalk either. Lacrosse came in with just three WSUC wins, but would take Stevens Point to the wire. Point would finally ice the victory in the last five minutes. Harrison's three ball with 5.15 left set the stage as the crowd came unglued. Seven of eight free throwing down the stretch produced a 76-71 win, putting the pointers in position to win the WSUC championship. <laughs> February 22nd, Williams Arena, Whitewater, Wisconsin. With the WSUC crown on the line, Stevens Point came through with flying colors. Trailing by as many as nine, Point rallied to set up the championship run. Andy Borio's three-pointer put Stevens Point ahead to stay. 
Former pointer Vince Nichols' layup with 107 left cut it back to one. Then it was time for Mr. Clutch. John Julius proving he was the best player in the league hit to put the pointers up 84-81. Moments later, Boomer stole a whitewater pass and connected with Juice, running point to the WSUC championship. Fittingly, it was Boomer and Juice that iced the coveted crown. After a two-week layoff, Point took the floor at Quant once again, this time in the District 14 semifinal against River Falls. The Falcons provided another tough game for the Pointers. They played Stevens Point right down to the wire before bowing out 63-60. The Pointers were relieved and ready to face the challenge of Eau Claire in the District 14 championship for the right to go to Kansas City. There was no stopping the determined Pointers in the District championship. Jack Lothian's dunk ended an incredible 18-4 run in the last eight minutes of the first half as Point tasted a title with a 33-21 halftime advantage. Eau Claire never got closer than 11 points the rest of the way as Point sealed its first district championship since 1985. It was a great way for Juice and Boomer to finish their careers in Quant. Keep up the tempo and the double what we did, not to relax and start celebrating. And I think that was a key because, you know, we kept our defensive pressure up the whole second half. We have a lot of confidence in what we're doing. You know, motivation is, you know, you just, you got to win. I mean, if you have pride in, in yourself and in your team, there's no way you can accept a loss. And I think all our guys looked at it that way. The Stevens Point season would come to an end on March 19th in Kansas City. After downing Western State of Colorado in the first round of the NAIA National Tournament, Point would lose to Erskine, South Carolina the following evening, 66-64. The last gasp of the Pointers' 91-92 dream season came when Andy Borio's three-point shot fell short. But in the days to follow, heads would be high. After all, UW Stevens Point men's basketball was merely realizing a dream so many can only dream of.